Kishan Lakiani, thank you so much for joining us on DXB today. So CEO and founder of Mind Valley, tell us why you are here in Dubai for the World Government Summit. Well, I love Dubai. I find that every time I'm in Dubai, the concentration of brilliant people here is exhilarating. Everywhere I go, every conference I attend, I just meet people who feed me with ideas. And the way I run my company is I spend 40% of my time with my team working from home or working on Google Hangouts or Zoom, but 60% of the time I need to be out there looking for great ideas, expanding my vision, coming up with new, new inspirations. And I find a lot of that in Dubai. Oh, Dubai is attracting so many smart minds. Yes, absolutely. So do you feel, I know you're speaking about um, leadership specifically right. and mindful leadership. Um, is there a link between mindfulness and becoming a better leader? Absolutely. So, but first you've got to break it down, mm -hmm. right? So the principle of mindfulness is really, a key part of it is really presence and patience. It's the idea of, of being able to detoxify yourself from stress mm. so that you can be grounded, you can be present, and science shows that if we can lower our stress, not only does our health improve, but our thinking improves. But it doesn't just stop there. The way we make decisions improve because you're less panicky, you have less anxiety. The way you interact with other people improve. And so mindful leadership is just one of many different forms of leadership that Mind Valley looks at. Mindful leadership is basically leadership where you're integrating mindfulness into your approach and thus you can be present, you can be stress-free, you're better able to access levels of creativity, but it's just one. Mm. There's also transformational leadership. Yeah. We have programs on that as well. Transformational leadership is where the people you lead transform with you. You're elevating them, you're getting them to hit new heights, you're getting them to become the best versions of themselves. So there are many different types of leadership what I was talking about today was just a tiny slice of the grand spectrum of leadership, and that was leadership in a mindful sense. Amazing. So it seems like it's a cure for burnout culture, you know, as most yes. executives can definitely relate to burnout culture. So if someone has experienced burnout, how would you suggest them to kind of use mindfulness or begin practicing mindfulness? Okay, so the first thing you have to understand is that burnout culture is based on an outdated paradigm of work, mm. an absolutely outdated paradigm that is essentially a lie. Okay. The sign shows that if you are burning out, it's not about your hard work that creates productivity. Rather, productivity comes from a balance of moments of focus and creativity and being in the zone, and then moments of recovery. Okay. Look at sports people. Sports people don't just get out there on the field and practice, practice, practice. They take into account their nutrition, so they are const they eat well. Mm -hmm. They take into account their sleep. Sleep is so important when it comes to sports because sleep correlates with decision making. Mm -hmm. They take into account their peace of mind because your emotional regulation. Running a business, any type of career that we do right now is like being in a sports field. A race car driver isn't using his physical body as much as he's using his senses, he's using his mind. You read the interviews with Lewis Hamilton and how much he prioritizes sleep. Well, the same thing is important for anyone today who's working the nine to five. Mm. You are using your mind like a sports person. It's highly competitive out there. And you need to, and, and it's stupid, absolutely stupid for a, if you're, if you're on a racetrack to skip on sleep because your rate of reaction time, your decision making is all gonna go down. The same thing happens if we aim for burnout culture. So the outdated model is, I'm gonna work long hours and impress the boss, right. then get as little sleep as I can, wake up early, go straight to the office. Yeah. But in actuality, that's a recipe for disaster. Not only are you gonna die younger, because you're hurting your body, reducing longevity, but decision making is gonna be poorer. There was a study, for example, done with, with um, army servicemen in the US, and these, these soldiers were taken to a range and they had to shoot a target. And at eight hours sleep, they could hit 90% of the target. If their sleep goes down from eight hours to six hours, their accuracy drops to around 50%. That's and, if, and if they get five hours of sleep, their accuracy goes from 90% to 15%. So look at that. That Incredible. is a massive drop in accuracy Incredible. in decision-making simply from cutting off three hours of sleep. 
So what is that doing to your decision-making capabilities on a job if you aren't getting enough sleep? Now that's just one factor, right? It's not just sleep, it's nutrition. Do you know that the food that we put in our body is going to affect our ability to make the right decisions and how we show up at work? Your food affects your emotional state. It also affects your focus. If you're not eating the right food, if you're not supplementing with the right supplements, and today we know that there are certain herbs like radiola, there are supplements like um, alpha-GPC, which actually improve brain cognition. If you aren't getting these from the right foods or you aren't supplementing, you're actually operating with lower cognitive potential than you otherwise would. So you have sleep, you have supplements, and then you have this whole domain of, of mindfulness, which is essentially not just meditation and being able to relax, but it's emotional regulation, it's emotional mastery. It's being able to navigate the myriad of emotions you're gonna face when you're on the job. All of these are things we have to take into account in the world of work, and great companies who deploy these methodologies to their employees and their C-level executives simply do better. So why don't more companies adopt these methodologies they do. for the CEOs? They do. Okay. When we say why don't most companies adopt these, we're actually looking at companies from a lens that's around 10 years old. Right. As recently as 2018, the majority, as recently as 2018, in a survey by Daniel Goldman, 45% of Fortune 100 companies had meditation training for their employees. Oh, amazing. As recently as 2018, and now it's probably well over 20, uh, well over 50%. That's absolutely incredible. So one of the m biggest themes of the World Government Summit this year is around education, right. right? So how does lifelong learning actually contribute to you know, improving your leadership style? I'm so glad you asked that. So I was really honored to be asked by the uh, Emirati government to produce a program called Mastering Growth Mindset for all civil servants here in the Emirates. Mm -hmm. Lifelong learning is essentially mastery of what is called a growth mindset. If you look at today's world, the world is changing so fast that if you aren't, if you aren't constantly growing, you are going to be obsolete. Mm. For example, this very month, anyone working in any type of communications field, if they are not using ChatGPT, yeah. they are officially obsolete. Yeah. Because ChatGPT is such a massive enabler of productivity. And if you're not doing it, your competition is, the other person buying for your job. And so you, we need a growth mindset because we constantly have to be learning and growing. Now, the good news is growth mindset is not very hard to do. Mm. There are simple practices. One of the most important practices is if you're working a 40-hour week, you take two of those 40 hours and you block off that time. So maybe it's Wednesday from 4 to 6. You block off that time to stop doing what you're doing and to look at how can you be better at what you're doing. Even if you're, say, in customer support, and if you can get permission from your boss, yeah. you would block off 4 to 6 p.m. and you would say study books on communication or read books on customer support or customer satisfaction or maybe use that time to dabble with chat GPT in terms of composing customer support replies. Mm -hmm. If you adopt that, you are going to constantly innovate. And the thing is, if you're not doing that, you will stay stagnant at the same level, doing the same job forever and ever and ever. But people forget that. It's so common these days to get trapped into a wheel of busyness yeah. where you don't have time to grow. And worse, you don't have time to catch up on your sleep. You don't have time to create balance in your life. That's the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And that is going to keep you in a perpetual hamster wheel, constantly running and running and running, trying to catch up. But when you adopt a growth mindset, because you're bringing in the latest tools, you're learning, in, learning latest ideas, what you find is that what takes you 40 hours a week eventually you can do it in less and less and less and less and less time. Yeah. For example, I'm a CEO. This past month, I shaved off one hour a day in work because I gained mastery of chat GPT. Wow. Now, it took me a weekend. I sacrificed a weekend to go really deep in this new technology. Mm -hmm. But as a result of maybe that 10 hours spent on a weekend, I now save five hours every week. That's incredible. Communication emails. Uh, memos to my team, emails to my customers, all are now significantly faster because of ChatGPT. But I took the time to learn that. That is growth mindset. And whether you're at the customer support level and you are 21 years old and fresh out of university mm -hmm. or you're a CEO, if you can budget that two hours a week to create what is called innovation time, mm -hmm. 
and you're going to get better and better at what you do. Now, of course, this is just one of the principles that I'm teaching in the uh, Growth Mindset Program for the Emirati government. There are many other principles you can bring in, but the idea is never stop growing. And if you stop growing, you start stagnating. Yeah, incredible. ChatGPT is a very relevant example. You know, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid has just mandated a study into this for, you know, to see how it's feasible for the world, um, sorry, for the government to kind of roll out in Dubai. So definitely a very relevant example. I think most businesses and executives should take. But quickly moving on to female leadership. Right. So I'm very biased and very excited that you're actually speaking about the superpowers of female leaders, you know. So how would um, a female leader differentiate from a male leader, for example? What are some of the attributes that you've identified in your research? Well, I, I think, so firstly, I, I just want to admit, I do not feel I am qualified to speak about female leadership. Okay. Because I'm coming from a male lens, mm -hmm. and no matter what, that lens is going to be cloudy. So in my uh, talk tomorrow, I'm bringing in ideas from uh, two books that I've recently dived deep in, in terms of feminine energy. It's called, one is called The Bing Effect, mm -hmm. and the other one is called The Glass Ledge uh, by Iman Obu, who happens to be um, um, a Moroccan writer, a Moroccan entrepreneur and writer. And I was particularly uh, reading Iman's book because I wanted to look at female leadership from an Arab woman's perspective, okay. right? So one of the things that, that Iman spoke about in her book, which I found really interesting, is that when it comes to men, mm -hmm. men tend to be overconfident right. in terms of their abilities. But women sometimes tend to be underconfident, yes. and they doubt themselves. And sometimes we call that imposter syndrome. Yeah. But a healthy balance is somewhere in between. And I think that one of the reasons why women doubt themselves most is because if you look at corporate hierarchy today, how companies are run, the modern American enterprise is a relic from the American military of the 1940s. After World War II, a lot of the regimented hierarchical structure of the military evolved into the modern American corporation. And again, it was the modern American corporation uh, that influenced the modern Japanese corporation and the modern German corporation, right? Yeah. But all of these were made based on a primarily male, militaristic structure. Mm -hmm. Now, women tend to lead in different ways. Yeah. And if you, if you um, so let's go back to one of, one of the books I mentioned, The Bing Effect, which talks about balancing feminine and, and masculine energy. There are certain qualities that males tend to have tend to, to masculine energy tends to do better with, and certain qualities that feminine energy tends to do better with. Now, right. again, this is not associated with gender. You can be biologically male and be f more feminine. You can be biologically female and be more masculine. But generally, if you're biologically female, you have more, more feminine energy. So qualities of feminine energy are intuition, mm. are nurturing, are listening, are care, creativity. Um, qualities of masculine are directness, decisiveness, action, um, logic, and so on. Now, this isn't just cultural programming. Some of it is if your mother or your father tells you a woman has to be a certain way, and we, we have this through our culture, yes. then you tend to adopt those ways. But some of this also has to do with our biochemistry. Okay. For example, let's look at, the, at, at your right hand. Hold up your right hand for, for a second, okay? So, so Based on your, your right hand, yeah. if, I, if I look at your right hand, one of the things that I, okay, so you are, you are more or less balanced in terms of masculine Am and feminine. I? Now, now I'll tell you why. Okay, so look at my right hand, okay? okay? So there is an actual study that shows that if you have higher dosage of prenatal testosterone, okay. that means when you're a baby in the womb, there's greater testosterone, this finger, your ring finger, is longer than than your second finger. Right. Okay. okay, so in many men who are masculine, this finger tends to be longer than this finger. Right. Now, if you see a woman and her ring finger is longer than this finger, then she tends to have slightly more masculine qualities. Interesting. So this is really interesting, but my point here is, now this isn't perfect science, mm. but studies have shown that prenatal testosterone doesn't, does affect your finger size, and for some reason, it also correlates with other behavior. For example, men who have this finger longer than this finger mm -hmm. actually tend to be more agreeable with women. They tend to agree more with women. But men who have more feminine energy tend to disagree more with women. Interesting. 
this was a scientific study. Okay. Also, men who have thing, <laughs> this finger longer than this finger tend to be found more attractive by women. Interesting. <laughs> and, and so there are all of these unique studies, but it shows that part of this is biochemistry. Mm. And then there's part of it that's, that's learned culture. Okay, now let's go back to masculine qualities and feminine qualities, right? So the good news is this. A lot of research is emerging right now that shows that feminine qualities can be really advantageous in business. Yeah. So let's look at care and nurturing. Women tend to be more nurturing than, or feminine energy tends to be more nurturing than masculine energy. And it's very obvious to understand why. Our mothers, our mothers are so nurturing. So there was a study by Gallup and they called millions of employees and they found that employees who answered yes to the following question, stayed with their companies longer, were more productive at work, had higher revenue per employee, and were more engaged at work. And that question was this, my supervisor or manager cares about me as a person. Wow. Right? So female supervisors, I believe, mm -hmm. if we look at nurturing as a feminine energy, tend to do way better at care. Now another one is um, another study that's really interesting is studies on intuition. So the Newark College of Engineering did a study on human intuition. And they found that CEOs who score highly in intuitive tests also tend to have better track records for profitability in their enterprise. Okay. Intuition is very much a feminine quality. Now this does not mean that men don't have intuition, but women tend to be slightly better at intuition. We've all heard the phrase, a mother's intuition, right? right. And maybe, maybe this actually comes from, from, from motherhood. Mm -hmm. How many, because I, I know so many, I, I know so many moms, including uh, my ex-wife, who's the mother of my children, who just know, just know when the child <laughs> needs them, even if that child is in school somewhere right. and is having a hard day. And so intuition has been proven as giving you an edge in business. And intuition is primarily another skill of feminine energy. Now again, please know that none of these are in a box. A man can be, can take on feminine qualities. A woman can take on masculine qualities. Mm -hmm. It's really useful to be able to dance that dance in the workplace and oh. be able to understand both. Men can learn to be more nurturing, can learn to be more intuitive, can learn to be more creative. Women can learn to be more direct. And um, when you take on this balance, you do better at your job. But unfortunately for women, we have built a world that's stacked against women. I just came back from a um, startup conference in Europe mm -hmm. and there was a really shocking disappointing statistic okay. that was shared and that statistic was only one percent of VC money in all of Europe went to women entrepreneurs in the yeah. past one year. I've heard that as well. Yeah. It is astonishing. But here's the flip side of that. Yeah. That those women entrepreneurs they do better than the male entrepreneurs. Really? Yeah. And I'm sure they like employ more women as well. Perhaps, yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your perspective on females. Like, I definitely, as a female leader myself, it's very valuable for us when men, we get the male perspective on female leadership. So, quickly jumping into a very exciting event happening for Mind Valley, which is its first event in Dubai happening on the 25th of February. Tell us more about why you picked Dubai and what we can expect. Well, we picked Dubai because, um, and, and here I want to give credits where, where it's due. There's this Saudi-born woman in my team, Ola Abbas, who for seven years has been telling me we need to expand Mind Valley in the Middle East. And I always told her, no, no, our market is America and Europe. Middle Easterners don't, are not into this stuff. Um, Ola proved to be correct. <laughs> and she helped grow the company in the Middle East. And today, our highest concentration of members per capita is in Dubai. Wow. And, and it's, it is incredible how massive Mind Valley is in the Middle East, where we have a channel on Emirates Airlines. We have two Mind Valley programs, which are going in the government training portal. Um, and this event that we are doing in Dubai, and Ola obviously is running it, is our highest attended event in our history. But what we're doing is we're bringing in all of Mind Valley's best teachers. We identified our five teachers who were really popular in Dubai. Jim Quick, who Love teaches him. speed learning, yes. Lisa Nichols, who teaches communication, Marissa Pierre, who teaches you how to talk to your body so it heals itself, mm. and Shafali Sabari, who teaches principles of becoming an evolutionary woman, and uh, who, te who teaches conscious parenting. All four of them uh, are some of the key teachers that we have brought to Dubai. 
very excited to see that event. What can we expect for Dubai's first Mind Valley event? Well, expect to learn from these incredible teachers. Now, very often when you attend a convention or a summit, it's it's very academic, right? right? And and you're it it feels like you're at work. You're taking down notes. You're you're trying to digest information. Mm. This one, you we we don't practice learning. We practice a concept called transformation. Okay. Now, transformation is where our job is to make you walk out of that room at the end of that talk as a different person. And this means not just spewing out facts and figures, but giving you a transformative experience. Now, this may be through hypnotherapy or taking you through a deep altered state or meditative experience. Mm. It may be through shaking a belief system and giving you a new belief that you can install. It may be teaching you a new habit that you can instantly apply in your life. It may be getting you to connect with the people in that room so you walk out with new friends. But Mind Valley seminars and Mind Valley as a platform is focused on transformation, not learning. Transformation versus learning is like comparing a Mercedes car to a tricycle. Transformation is so much more powerful and that's what we seek to do. So you will transform the way you think, you will transform the way you communicate with your body, potentially even l learning how to uh, recover from illnesses faster, how to increase your lifespan. You will transform the way you understand your consciousness. You will transform your communication style. You will also transform other aspects of your being, how you meditate, how you practice visualizing your goals. We bring all of these phenomenal modalities together in this two-day event. The first day is focused on transforming yourself as a human being. The second day is focused on transforming yourself as an entrepreneur or as a career person. Incredible. So final question from DXB today. Who should attend the Mind Valley events? Anyone who has a job okay. and wants to grow in their job or grow their business and understand that the old way of doing things no longer works. Okay. And in today's world, you got to treat yourself the way a, a pro athlete treats herself. You got to be taking care of your mind, your spirit, your soul, your nutrition, your body, and you got to have the best tools and the best teachers. Not just rummaging on YouTube and trying to find tips. You need the best teachers because your time is valuable. Mm. So, if you are that type of person, then this weekend is going to give you growth mindset for the rest of your life because you are not going to be able to walk out of that room as the same individual. You will walk out of that room as a different version of yourself, ready to embrace growth as part of your lifestyle for the rest of your life. Incredible. I definitely cannot wait. Vishen Lakiani, it's been a personal honor. Thank you so much on behalf of DXB today for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.